ashver.com Hello, welcome to ashver.com. You are watching an interesting video about laryngomalacia in infants and children. Please read the disclaimer carefully. What is laryngomalacia? Sometimes, when a baby is born, parents will notice a loud, squeaky sound when the baby breathes. Or perhaps the hospital nursery staff notices problems with the baby's breathing along with noisy breathing, sufficient to keep the baby inpatient until the cause is discovered or is discovered. Nearly all cases of laryngomalacia are evident by the time the baby is five weeks old. Other times, an older child will present with snoring and sleep apnea, or loud breathing with exercise, which must be investigated. Parents are often confused and alarmed when they are told their infant or child has a condition known as laryngomalacia, pronounced laryngomalacia. This condition is generally congenital, and floppy tissue collapses over the vocal cords to produce the loud, squeaky noise. The noise is known as stridor, and occurs when the baby inhales. The stridor of laryngomalacia will often get worse around 4-8 months of age, before slowly resolving. The vast majority of laryngomalacia cases resolve by the time a baby is 2 years old. Time resolves laryngomalacia in 99% of cases. Some children, particularly those with silent acid reflux, may develop acquired, or late onset, laryngomalacia. This is rarer than the congenital cases. Laryngomalacia can be a very mild disorder with no complications, or can be extremely severe, requiring surgical intervention. Most babies with laryngomalacia have the mild form. How is laryngomalacia diagnosed? Observation, squeaky stridor when the baby inhales. Generally, a baby will be referred to an ear, nose, and throat doctor when stridor is detected by a pediatrician. Flexible laryngoscopy, a small, flexible probe is threaded up the probe is threaded up the baby's nose and into his or her throat to visualize the vocal cords. This test is performed while the baby or child is awake and parents may be asked to feed the child during the test if there is a history of choking or aspirating on liquids. While the procedure can be upsetting for children, it is not pot painful. The probe is usually about the size of a spaghetti noodle. Parents are often able to see the camera images from the probe on a video screen during the procedure. Microlaryngoscopy slash bronchoscopy, visualization of the entire airway while child is asleep. This test is done in the hospital under anesthesia. X-rays, sometimes X-rays will be ordered of the neck and chest region to make sure there is no other anatomical problem as the cause for the stridor. pH, impedance probe, many children with laryngomalacia also have GERD. If acid reflux is suspected, a, P a pH probe may be performed to determine the severity of the reflux. The traditional pH probe is placed by a GI specialist and proper placement in the lower esophagus is determined by X-ray. Another type of pH probe is known as the pharyngeal pH probe, or airway probe, which detects reflux reaching the upper airway and nasal regions. This pH probe is often placed by an ENT and sits just behind the uvula, the dangling bit at the back of the mouth. Upper Endoscopy this test is usually performed by the eye doctor if acid reflux is suspected. The esophagus will be evaluated, and often a sample of tissue will be sent for biopsy to determine if there is any damage caused by the acid reflux. Sleep study, sometimes a sleep study will be ordered to determine if there are apneas, cessation of breathing, when the child Laryngomalacia symptoms the most common symptom of laryngomalacia is noisy breathing, stridor, particularly when the baby is crying, agitated, or lying on his, her back. Complicated symptoms of laryngomalacia include Difficulty with gaining weight Difficulty with feeding Frequent spitting up Oxygen desaturations, apparent life-threatening events GERD, acid reflux Sleep apnea. 
daytime apnea is resulting in cyanosis, turning blue. Choking on liquids or food. Aspirating liquids or food into the lung. What causes laryngomalacia? There is no consensus as to the cause of laryngomalacia. It is the most common cause of stridor in young children and has been well studied, but a definitive cause has not been found. There are several theories as to the origin of laryngomalacia. Neuromuscular muscular immaturity, some researchers theorize that the development of neuromuscular control is delayed. Good, it is possible that acid reflux may cause laryngomalacia. Some researchers think that the constant exposure of acid to the delicate tissues of the throat creates swelling and weakness in the larynx. On the other hand, other researchers feel that the laryngomalacia creates a suction effect, which causes the acid reflux. This is referred to as a chicken or egg problem, so, so many children have both laryngomalacia and GERD. Anatomical problem, some researchers feel that the laryngomalacia is caused by a physical defect in the cartilage and tissue around the larynx. Laryngomalacia and acid reflux. Many children have laryngomalacia and acid reflux. The acid reflux may be obvious due to frequent vomiting, or may be silent reflux, in which the child does not vomit. Silent reflux is quite insidious, as the acid often reaches the, reaches the very delicate and unprotected tissues of the nose and airway. Children with silent reflux may sometimes choke, cough, gag, have asthma, recurrent pneumonia, frequent ear infections, and frequent sinus infections. The first line of treatment is to control the acid reflux, so the child will be put on medication to control the GERD. A proton pump inhibitor or acid blocker medication is typically used. This will help protect the larynx from further assault by the acid in the stomach. For some children, the acid blocking medication is insufficient, and a Nissen fund application is recommended. Anti reflux surgery. Uncomplicated laryngomalacia. 99% of babies will outgrow laryngomalacia, and will not require further medical treatment. While the breathing is loud and frightening to parents, there are no significant apneas, respiratory distress, or growth problems for most babies. Complicated laryngomalacia. For some children, laryngomalacia presents as a serious medical problem. Serious complications of laryngomalacia include oxygen desaturations, children may be unable to breathe for brief periods of time resulting in a drop in blood, ox in blood oxygen level. In very severe cases, the child may turn blue during the apnea events. Failure to thrive, some children have severe laryngomalacia, and the effort to breathe requires more calories than the child can take in. In this case, the child cannot grow or maintain appropriate weight. Sleep apneas, some children may breathe well during the day but have apneas when the airway relaxes during sleep. Sleep apnea can cause a great deal of growth and developmental problems in young children, so this problem must be treated. Laryngomalacia surgery For some children with severe laryngomalacia, a surgery called a supraglottoplasty will be recommended. For the majority of children, this surgery will eliminate the apnea, though some stridor may remain. The techniques vary but the child will be placed into a, pedi into a pediatric intensive care unit after surgery. Many children will require intubation of the airway after surgery, to prevent the airway from swelling shut. Some children do not experience swelling after surgery and the airway tube is removed in the recovery room. Children with uncontrolled acid reflux may see a recurrence in the laryngomalacia due to chronic acid exposure and swelling of the tissue in the larynx. Acid reflux should be completely suppressed before committing to surgery. Surgeons are extremely careful to take the smallest amount of tissue required during the surgery, sometimes this conservative approach means that a revision surgery will be required to remove more tissue. The typical hospital stay is approximately 48 hours after the surgery is completed, the stay may be extended if there are any complications. In some cases, the surgery may not be successful in controlling the problems created by the laryngomalacia. CPAP for laryngomalacia. 
continuous positive airway pressure, PAP, PAP, may be recommended to treat obstructive sleep apnea. This method will work for some children, by splinting the airway open with blowing air. The child must wear a mask and become accustomed to the machine. Some children will not adapt the wearing a PAP mask, making treatment difficult. In, in addition, a PAP or BiPAP machine is not always successful at treating apnea caused by a physical upper airway obstruction. Children with severe extraesophageal reflux disease may experience side effects from using a PAP machine, since the machine may blow the reflux into the nasal passages and lungs. On the other hand, sometimes CPAP will help prevent acid reflux, by removing the suction effect of the laryngomalacia. For children who have an unsuccessful supraglottoplasty procedure and continuing sleep apnea, a CPAP trial may be considered for treatment. Fund application and revision supraglottoplasty. Some children with severe GERD and laryngomalacia may have an unsuccessful supraglottoplasty due to uncontrolled acid reflux. In this case, the reflux must be controlled prior to attempting a revision supraglottoplasty. An ISIN fund application may be recommended, which is a procedure to tighten the valve at the top of the stomach. Success rates for an ISIN fund application for traditional GERD are over 90%. Unfortunately, the success rates of a fund application for silent reflux (LPR reflux) are much lower, at around 70 to 80%. A revision supraglottoplasty can be performed once the reflux is controlled. Laryngomalacia and choking Many children with laryngomalacia will have difficulty swallowing, a condition known as dysphagia. This can be due to two factors, the first is slow esophageal motility, motility, which can cause food to get stuck in the esophagus. The second is due to laryngospasm, when the larynx spasms, causing a choking incident. Choking is one of the most frightening aspects of laryngomalacia. Some children choke only on solid foods, and others only choke on thin lick liquids. As each case is unique, children who have choking episodes must be evaluated with a swallow study, this is a modified barium swallow test. Some children may aspirate or breathe food into their lungs. Prompt evaluation by an ear, nose, and throat doctor is essential, as there may be complicating factors such as a laryngeal cleft, a tiny opening between the esophagus and the airway, or tracheomalacia, floppy trachea. Many children with isolated laryngomalacia suffer from choking episodes. The treatment regime may involve adding thickener to thin liquids for children who choke on fluids. On the other hand, thickener may worsen the choking episodes for some children. Many children cannot swallow chunky food and need the assistance of a speech-language pathologist and a feeding clinic. The relationship between laryngomalacia, acid reflux, esophageal motility, and choking is likely due to the vagal nerve. The vagal nerve is responsible for laryngeal tone, as well as esophageal Tracheostomy is almost never performed for laryngoamalacia. In extremely rare cases, children with severe, complicated medical problems and severe laryngomalacia may have a tracheostomy performed. This is exceptionally rare, as a supraglottoplasty is generally successful at fixing the pxing the problems caused by laryngomalacia. In some cases, continuous positive airway pressure (CPAP) or by level (BiPAP). Machines are required to splinter the airway open. If a supraglottoplasty fails, this is an option for many families. In very rare cases, the airway is so floppy a tracheostomy is required and is placed below the level of obstruction, to allow the child to breathe freely. Our, complicated, laryngomalacia story. Our son was about two and one half when he was diagnosed with severe sleep apnea. He was snoring loudly at night, or so we thought. As a first course of treatment, his tonsils and adenoids were removed. For approximately 95 per approximately 95% of children, this cures the sleep apnea. Unfortunately, our son's obstructive apnea got worse after the tonsillectomy, an almost unheard of situation. Knowing that he had severe silent reflux, 
RENT decided to perform a bronchoscopy and microlaryngoscopy to find the level of obstruction. At the age of three, we were told he had developed laryngomalacia. He was not snoring at night, but had strayed or. This is extremely unusual, as most cases of laryngomalacia are congenital. We are fairly certain that, in his case, the, the severe reflux caused the laryngomalacia. He started to develop daytime strador and his apnea was getting progressively worse. His anti-reflux medications were increased and he had a supraglottoplasty performed when he was almost three and a half years old. His surgery went very smoothly, the airway tube was removed room and we were released a few hours early from the intensive care unit. Unfortunately, a sleep study a few months later proved the sleep apnea was still present. His condition is both chronic and progressive, his reflux and laryngomalacia have only gotten worse with age. His reflux is not is not controllable with medications, so we are faced with two options, an attempt at CPAP therapy, or an ISIN fund application and revision supraglottoplasty. We are attempting to treat the remaining apnea with a CPAP machine, hopeful that it will treat the apnea without causing negative side effects from the acid reflux. Due to uncontrolled reflux and continuing airway complications, our son had a Nissen fund application performed at four and one half years of age. The surgery was successful in controlling the reflux, but he now has a feeding tube and receives supplemental nutrition at night. Many children with severe laryngomalacia and reflux have feeding problems, which can include choking, motility issues, and aspiration. A direct laryngoscopy was repeated when our son was five years old. At that time, the laryngomalacia had returned. He has a severe level of obstruction, despite his supraglottoplasty and epipexy, at the age of three years. We are now in the decision-making process for another supraglottoplasty. The alternative is a lifetime of ventilation support at night, as his condition appears to be getting progressively worse over time. Our son's case is unusual in many ways, his age of presentation, the severity of the disorder, and the failure to respond to traditional medications and surgery are not typical. Over 99% of infants with laryngomalacia will simply outgrow the Thank you for watching this video. This channel offers motivational, inspirational, valuable and informative videos to soothe, cleanse and inspire your health, mind body and spirit. You can find lot of interesting videos on wide range of topics here, stay tuned and keep watching.